I tell you who a, another quintessential character actor is, Warren Oates. And yeah. uh, Warren Oates wrote a massively successful and creative wave throughout the 60s and the 70s in films like uh, uh, the, the, the Bring Me the Head of Alfredo Garcia, The Wild Bunch, Tulane Blacktop, Cockfighter, Badlands. Uh, Badlands. Um, let's see, what, uh, what the other one, the shooting, um, you said Tulane Blacktop, and there's, you know, let's not forget Stripes in the early 80s, the one, like, yes. flat-out comedy he did. Um, and the other, if I'm not mistaken... If I am not mistaken, he's also in Race with the Devil with um, Peter yes. Fonda, which is the first thing I remember seeing him in, and that was the late 70s. Yes, good stuff. Yeah. He, he was an unlikely star if there ever was one. He, he's an outlaw, really, but yeah. I think that's exactly what made him so magnetic mm-hmm. on screen. Susan Campo's new book, Warren Oates, A Wild Life, explores this icon of the cinema in vivid, entertaining, and insightful detail. Ms. Campo, who previously made a huge splash with her passionate writings on the music scene and her novels, including Life After Death and Other Stories and Pretty Things, had none other than Charles Bukowski call her a pretty girl with a dirty mind. And that's exactly why she's with us tonight. <laughs> and that's right, because I love if any everyone knows me, I worship Bukowski, so there it's, you it's go. It's a little attempt at humor. Uh, this is a great book. You can purchase it on our homepage by clicking the, uh, the, the icon of the front cover there, take you directly to the Amazon page where you can purchase it for yourself. I highly recommend it. It's a great fl- a privilege to welcome Susan Campo to Movie Geeks United. Susan, are you with us? I am. Welcome. Hi. Thank you Hi. so much for being with us tonight. Oh, it's great fun. Already, or so far. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, no, you, you said it best. <laughs> Tell me, obviously you, you have a great passion for writing. Uh, where did that begin for you? Oh, gosh, right. my story, I mean, I suppose growing up uh, in Orange County, California, with not a lot else of interest going on, Right. I, I always loved to write. I think I began writing by making fun of the kid in the seat next to me in the second grade, <laughs> that kind of thing. So maybe not Good for you. but that got me going, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and so when did that turn to kind of a... Uh, an obsession with music? Uh, gosh, probably in the kind of hippie, James Taylory, um, Beach Boys days, the kind of the later, the latter Beach Boys, and then into on into David Bowie after mm-hmm. that oh, punk yeah. rock, the usual progression. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so you've written about music, like we mentioned before, and you've written novels. And which came first for you? Did this? Did you want to? do a biography and then the idea for Warren Oates came or was it vice versa? I always kind of wanted to do a biography and um, I suppose probably the very first thing was poetry and then uh-huh. I thought I, I, I don't want to starve you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's what happened to me. That's what happened to me. So. I understand you know. Yeah. And then, then I had always thought who am I going to write a biography of and a friend of mine said well why not Warren Oates and I thought well mm. there, there's an idea. Mm-hmm. What, what was your uh, a consciousness of, of Warren Oates at that time before you ventured on this biography? Well, I'd gone to, to, to the drive-in to see Tulane Blacktop mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. of James Taylor and Dennis Wilson. And okay. then came away incredibly cool. impressed with Warren Oates. Yeah. I, for, I forgot about the other two entirely. So. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was it about him in that film? What was it that like made you forget about these two people who originally came for the movie? And then what was it about Warren? I suppose just the kind of um, the fact that he's he really dominates the film. I mean, mm-hmm, that, he that does. Kind of absolute passion. Right. And I mean, they, people do say he's the only actor in the film. I don't know that I. Well, you know, it's arguable. I suppose we could say he is, mm-hmm. but he still is. Well, Harry Dean's in it, but he still just just stands out so much. Right. Kind yeah. Of real yeah. feel, I guess. He always seemed like the most interesting character actors. Uh, which I don't even know if I agree with that terminology. I understand what character actor means. It's just I think all actors play characters. But uh, yeah, I wish I understood it. You know, I, I don't quite. I, I, I think don't, I know. think it's a, it's actually I think by today's standards maybe I, I don't want it almost derogatory because we're assuming these are actors that could never get on the cover of GQ yes. or Ben's Health. They, yeah. They're not the kind of actors who. What did you do to get in shape for this part? It's not like what, how did you rehearse, but what, how many ab exercises did you do? <laughs> yeah. And that's sadly what is the state of, I think, the entertainment 
entertainment in that regard and the press and everything. Hey, yeah. what's your workout routine for T2 or whatever? Oh, you know? Yeah, yeah. That probably wouldn't have worked for Warren. No. <laughs> yeah, that was, he he <laughs> didn't have to deal with that. No. Uh, but like all the great, interesting character actors for me, yeah. he seemed an unlikely uh, movie actor. He was born in a small Kentucky town. I understand he was a Marine. Yes. What drew him to performance? What did that do for him? Well, he, he played a part as a little kid in a, a school play, again, sort of age five or six, reciting, I wish I was a cat, I do. And he kind of credits that as getting him going, but then really kind of retreating from, well, being picked on. I think yeah. that, that he started reading books and plays and, and wanting to, to do something else. And also, he, he retreated, I mean, like many young kids, he, he got really interested in movies, going to, to see the movies in the nearby town of Greenville, Kentucky, mm-hmm. and coming back to his town of Depoy and acting out all the parts for the other kids who didn't get to go to the movies. Mm-hmm. Mm. So what was his entry into, into film? Well, it would have been t- early TV, you know. Mm-hmm. It would have been early, early done in the, the live days of TV in New York City. Um, but the first film, gosh, I mean, it must have been up Periscope. I'm hoping I'm not getting this wrong. <laughs> in 1959, right? That would have been the first actual film. But he did did TV work before then, and I guess that. The gun smoke and things like that. Ex- yeah, many many gun smokes. Yes. Yeah, and and he had that. Like I said in the intro, he had a kind of outlaw. There was something about him that said outlaw to to me and so many others. Was that his particular niche? Is that what made him so magnetic to people on yeah, screen? Yeah, I think so, and I think he was always a little bit different from from everyone around him. He was certainly a dedicated actor, but he was not an egotistical actor in any way. Yeah, no, and, not at all. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's kind of unusual for well, for now certainly, and for then as well. Yeah, and and he was. He, he, how did he train? Did he did he have a lot of training in, in theater and so forth? Yeah, he did at the University of Louisville. That he he come back from the Marines and joined the the college. And uh, a teacher who had him as a recal- recalcitrant student in an English class said, you know, we need someone you like you acting in our play. So he went down and tried out for the part and just absolutely got hooked. Mm. And then when he moved on to New York City, he trained with Wynne Handman. Uh, in New York, but I, I know it's still around and mm. highly of Warren. And I think it, I mean, it was really formal training, which I don't know how many people know know that watching Warren. They may have thought he's a kind of right. kid who was able to pull it off, and it, it is absolutely not true. He really studied and took all the parts seriously. That's very much one of the main points that I was taken by in your book, uh, in that he, if you were on the set with him, you knew this was a this was a serious trained actor. Oh yeah. Uh, and I think watching him, he feels so authentic. Uh, that's he's the real deal. I mean, you know it watching him. How did he live his his life off the screen? What was he like off the screen? I think with a whole lot of passion. I think mm. either, either, you know, out with the nightlife every night, living it to the nth degree, or perhaps, you know, at home maybe still living it or at home studying a script and kind of retreating. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A little bit of both. But certainly big extremes, but with the great passion between the both. Okay. Yeah. Talk about a passionate collaboration. Uh, you can't think about Warren Oates, his film career, without – Thinking of Sam Peckinpah, I mean, yeah. uh, uh, epic collaboration there. Yeah, Certainly. that was an interesting relationship, a real love-hate kind of relationship, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, I suppose it was a kind of, like I say, a fatal friendship. That, I mean, yeah, probably that's was, one way to put it. Yeah, yeah, neither was really good for the other, but thank God they were friends. So. Yeah. Yeah. What What did they? How did they complement each other, and and what made them clash? Well, I, I think they were both, I mean, they were certainly both ex-Marines, mm-hmm. and they both had lost their fathers at critical stages in their lives. And I think they, uh, they both really cared about what they were doing. I think Sam took it to a far greater extreme and was, could turn a whole lot meaner than Warren could, and mm-hmm. that's what, uh, you know, would divide them mm-hmm. at times. I mean, Sam certainly turned, turned on everybody. He didn't turn on Warren to the extreme he turned on others in his life, right. 
but he still was nasty enough to you know, go after Warren's widow, Warren's last wife, right? And and cause a cause a schism there, definitely. But, there's a great quote that Warren Oates has about describing on um, Peck and Paul. He said, I don't think he's a horrible maniac. It's just that he injures your innocence, and yeah. you get pe- pissed off about it. Yeah, I love that. It's, it's, yeah. so, it's beautiful, and it's also it's very Warren to see that. It's, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very, very touching. I don't, yeah, I don't know that Sam would have seen it quite that way. but Warren No, <laughs> I don't think he would have. <laughs> Warren, Warren really did. Yeah. Uh, and yet... He seemed the perfect director for Warren because Warren liked strong, argumentative directors, didn't he? Yes, he did. He didn't want someone that he could push around. He thought yeah. if he could push around his director, he just didn't have that much confidence in the director then. It would kind of, you know, shy away from giving it his all. Right. Mm. Yeah. For you, is there a quintessential uh, Warren Oates performance? I like different ones on different days of the week. I mean, I liked all the yeah. ones you said in the intro. I like the hired hand on certain days. That's a good one. Certainly Alfredo Garcia. Mm-hmm. Um, Dillinger. Dillinger, I, he I, is the, you know, after, you know, we have him and Lawrence Tierney, and those are two big Dillingers to, um, you know, that, that Johnny Depp is going to have to measure up to, I think. So. Yeah, I think it's odd that Johnny Depp as a Kentuckian has never, as far as I know, referenced Warren Oates. And I right. Don't know, I don't know why, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's puzzling. Lawrence Tierney was certainly a whole lot meaner, I think. Oh, he was a mean. He was a mean man. <laughs> he certainly was. He was an interesting man. <laughs> he was. Yes. Definitely. That's the that's the next biography. Um, yeah. That would be fun. <laughs> yeah. Know, poor old Jack Lord, who gets such a pasting in my book. You know? <laughs> uh, uh, tell me about the journey in actually writing this book. When you called uh, Warren's collaborators, friends, family. Did you get a particularly warm reception? Were they eager to discuss him? Yeah, everybody. Everybody. People I thought probably wouldn't, you know, be able to have time. Just kind of cleared the books to say, let's, let's talk about Warren. And it was, it was really, really nice. And I was not, I didn't expect that. Mm. Uh, people really, they, they, and the memories, like I said, were, they were very vivid. They were as if they were yesterday. Yeah. You know, like Warren yeah. was a faded character. Like he was right here. Was there a highlight for, for you from that, from that experience? Oh, I think, I mean, Dennis Hopper was wonderful. I mean, even mm. though the memories might not be <laughs> ultra vivid. <laughs> in, a, in a way, it kind Classic. of worked. <laughs> in a way that almost fed it, you know, because what he yeah. did remember was so important, you know, <laughs> instead of remembering all the minutia, you know, he remembered wow. what mattered. And uh, lots of good things. I regret I never got Peter Fonda, but for some reason mm. I didn't. Mm. I don't know, maybe he's tired of talking about Warren or found it too painful, I don't know. Warren passed on in, uh, was it 82? 82, yes. Yeah. yeah. I think something like Blue Thunder might have been one of his last films that was mm-hmm. dedicated to him. Uh, yeah, and probably I think Tough Man was the actual yeah, last tough, film. Okay. I think it's either Blue Thunder or Tough Enough. They're both Tough Enough, yeah, sorry, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, tell me what his legacy is in your eyes. And, and let me first of all tell you, I love it that you've written a book about war notes because you know there there are biographies on other talents uh, of the yin yang but there's nothing on war notes <laughs> right and i i love these books like the one that was just released on hal ashby yes. this is the kind of cinematic history we need uh yes. we need to keep these these works alive oh well, thank you it. it's interesting that only university publishers will nibble and thank god they do i mean yeah. great I oh, great, great company and, and, yeah, I, I tried everything, and if people say, oh, no, no, it might be my favorite actor, but there's no place on the crowded biography shelves. Mm. Yeah, yeah, but there is always, there needs to be this, because, you know, like, it's the only one out there, and yeah. you, it needs to be there. I mean, it yeah. really does. Yeah. What, what do you think his legacy will be, or is? I think a very real presence. I mean, I think one, one of my, what was he, Wynne Handman, his acting teacher, who said he had, you know, this, you could feel the American dirt in his acting. He really could. Mm-hmm. I mean, this kind of presence, the dedication to the craft, and also the fact that he was really, I, he was kind of a, ahead of his time and also kind of timeless. I don't know if those mm-hmm. two are the same things, but I mean, when I was writing it, and I could see he was really interested in Zen and road trips and this, that, and the other, which seemed really contemporary but at the time would not have particularly been. So, mm-hmm. And 
just well these these performances that still resonate. I mean, I don't know that there was a bad one. If I watched Drum, I could probably say, well, he's probably not <laughs> given his best performance in that one. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, uh, and and he was one of a kind, obviously. But looking at the stars and the actors of today, yes. is there anyone out there that's comparable to what he had? I'm not sure. I know the young actor Joseph Gordon-Levitt is a big fan, and mm-hmm. I think I think there's every now and then I see something of Warren in him. Right. Mm-hmm. So, but other than that, I mean, they're probably the more obvious fans, like Benicio Del Toro. I, I think he's good. I'm not sure I see Warren in him particularly. Right. Mm-hmm. And beyond that, I don't I don't know. Do you? I mean, there's <laughs> only anyone? one actor I could think of, not uh, as maybe who would might have been considered a contemporary. Yeah. Uh, Fred Ward, maybe. Oh yeah. I mean, yeah. I would see him, but as far as today, I, I jo- Joshua Gordon Levitt. Yeah, I could see that. I can see yeah. that. But um, I was just thinking Fred Ward really was the last of those actors who would remind me of Warren Oates. Yeah. Uh, I I wanted to ask because this is interesting in that it doesn't seem that we have the personalities in cinema like we used to. I mean, Warren Oates was a, like I said before, a real authentic personality. Is there? Um, how did he take to fame? His I think level he of fame? was reticent about it. I don't think. I think he may have wanted to be a bigger actor and have more leading roles than he did. But right. I think he didn't like the stardom. He didn't understand it, I and mean, he wouldn't wasn't confronted with anything like he would have been today. I mean, I think of. If he were running around today, he, he and Peck and Pa, TMZ, would have put them out of business. I mean, they could have never <laughs> gone out, <You're> right. <laughs> ever, you know. Yeah. So yeah. Maybe, there, maybe part of it is that. Maybe part of it is as we get further away from, from you know, roots like that. I don't mm-hmm. know. Little towns that were little mining towns or that kind of thing. I don't, I don't know where actors come from with that kind of background anymore. Mm-hmm. 